Hey gang, welcome back to the Vintage Workshop. My name is Jeff Heath. Uh, it's been a while since uh, I posted a video, but I wanted to uh, post a video about my most recent acquisition here. I uh, picked this up yesterday. Uh, I've been doing a lot of metalworking this year, repairing and building new equipment for my business, and uh, just you know, really haven't had a lot of time to stop and do some filming. But uh, now that it's winter time, I want to get some videos going and show you a little bit of the uh, work we've been doing here in the shop. So uh, I wanted to talk to you about this uh, this Racine Power Hacksaw. This is a uh, model 816W2, which means it is a 8 inch tall by 16 inch wide cutting capacity. So it's a pretty decent size saw, very similar to a lot of the band saws that are available, but with about half the footprint. And uh, this particular one, uh, as usual for me, is broken. I've got to fix it before I can use it. Uh, hopefully it's not too major. These are well thought of saws. It's a hydraulic feed saw. So it's got some nice features on it for speedy cutting. It's actually rated at cuts uh, faster than a lot of the smaller size, similar size 10, 10 16, uh, which is 10 inch by 16 inch size band saws. Uh, actually by twice the speed, uh, which is the reason why I acquired it, because I've got some big structural steel members, seven inch rounds, solid steel, as well as some uh, eight inch by 12 inch and some six inch by eight inch structural steel. Uh, for an upcoming project, which you guys are going to see, that I also need to cut to length and, and whatnot. This saw also does miters. The fence here can be set at 45 degrees. It reduces the width of the cutting capacity, but still has a pretty nice 10 and a half inch cutting capacity at 45 inches, 8 inches by 10 and a half inches. So that's going to get the job done for me. But uh, let me show you what the problem is. This is the arm that does the, this is the frame that does the uh, sawing and there's a guide arm which I'll show you guys in a minute that goes right in here and the previous owner broke it so let me show it to you I've got it sitting right here it's a uh, it's a piece of uh, cast iron and uh, it's 29 inches long it's an inch thick and uh, two and a quarter inches wide and uh, the guy snapped it in half where this fits is it mounts to this arm right here and this fits inside this gibbed area and there are plates that I've got removed uh, off of my little workbench there but uh, we got to make a new one of these so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on showing you how we're gonna do that okay this is not an A-bomb wrench this is a uh, piece of uh, one inch thick uh, two and three quarter inch uh, wide by uh, boy I don't know about 42 inches long piece of mild steel 1018 steel not cast iron I priced out a piece of cast iron. Uh, I'm talking about almost $200 to get it shipped here. I said, nah, I've got some scrap laying around. So we're going to use what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this to length first. So I need a 29 inch piece. Then we're going to head over to the Kearney and Trucker Mill, uh, which you guys have only seen uh, stationary. You haven't seen it working yet, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, mill this to the proper size. We're going to need to drill uh, some holes, throw it to mount back on, and uh, when we're done, Hopefully we'll be able to get the hydraulic feed working back again on this saw because I need it to uh, do some projects which you guys are going to participate in in terms of viewing. So let's get this done and uh, let me bring you over to my other power hacksaw, my little guy, uh, which is an old uh, Keller and uh, we're going to cut this to length. Okay, hopefully you guys can see me down here. What we've got is my uh, Keller power hacksaw. This is a small one. Uh, that's the gigantic version, the one we're trying to fix is the much bigger capacity version of this little guy right here but this is a really good saw which you guys are about to see I just purchased a package of five Starrett Red, Sipe, uh, Red Stripe uh, Power Hacksaw blades from Starrett uh, this is 6 TPI so that's the most aggressive blade they make for this size saw so let's get after it and uh, you guys will get a chance to see how well this guy cuts alright let's turn it on and see how it does
Okay, I grew a beard. Okay, so that cut took about eight, eight and a half minutes. I didn't time it. I probably should have, but right in that range. I was looking at the clock on the wall. So as you can see, not exactly a speed demon, but it gets the job done. And I wouldn't want to do uh, a whole bunch of cuts like that uh, doing fabrication work with just a hand hacksaw. So that's the reason why I bought the bigger one, because I've got uh, pieces. This was a two and a half inch cut. I've got some pieces coming up that I've got to cut through seven inch solid rounds and uh, eight by twelves. So uh, that would take, I mean, that saw is not even capable of doing that. So at any rate, the part that's broken is uh, just shy of two and a quarter inches long, uh, wide. And uh, what I need to do is take this piece, which is exactly two and a half flat bar by one inch thick, both of them, and I need to machine this piece down. Uh, I'm going to measure these with, uh, with some calipers, my micrometer, uh, get the exact measurements, and then we'll go over to the mill. We'll uh, get it, I got to remove the vise. We're going to set it up flat on the table and we're going to uh, clamp it down and uh, you guys will see the setup and we'll uh, go ahead and show you the Kearney and Trekker in action. Okay guys, now that we've got that bar cut roughly to uh, length of 29 inches, I've come over to the middle and I've got this uh, setup going. I've got three vices in here and I've already uh, taken the time and I don't want to bore the heck out of you guys. But I've got this set up to where the bar is in the three vices. It's, with, it's 29 inches long the range of my mill, which is a Kearney and Trekker Model 2K 1946. Uh, back in the day, this was it. These are uh, the strongest, uh, hardest working mills that were ever made from uh, back in that time. And uh, at any rate, so what I've got is I've got the bar centered uh, within the 30 inch envelope of the X axis of the table so that I can make the entire milling step in one process, one move. Uh, without having to move the bar, slide the bar and the vices, and then re-indicate it in. So we're set up here. Uh, this bar is just a piece of uh, mild steel, uh, and it's actually pretty reasonably straight for what it is. I'm going to bring you in close. I'll show you the indicator, and I'll show you what we've got going on with regards to how flat it is uh, before we start milling. Okay, I'm hoping you can see my stare at indicator there. Right now I've got it all on there and set at zero and I'm at the full left end for the cutter. Of course, the uh, indicator is just a little bit over, but I'm going to go ahead, turn the mill on, and I'm going to sweep it down to the far end, and then I will show you down there. What you're going to see is just a three thousandths dip in the center of the bar. So there's three thousandths in unstraightness, for lack of a better term, of this existing bar, and I'm hoping to improve on that after we're done milling. So let me show you the uh, sweeping. I'm going to turn the mill on. going to use the rapids. So right there is about two and a half to three thousandths low. And now you'll see it come back up right at the end here. And there's the end of the travel, and it's just a little bit high, maybe a half a half a thou. So this is as close as I can get it. I've been bumping it around for about 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, let's uh, get the mill on, and uh, let's get this uh, show on the road.
just haul our feet across. Okay, I just measured. Uh, we're at uh, two inches, uh, 450,000. We got to get uh, two inches, 240,000. So we've got 210,000 to go. Uh, I'm gonna stop messing around here and uh, get this thing down close. What I plan on doing is uh, lapping it uh, at the end to uh, make up for any discrepancies, and I will more than likely uh, take the roughing uh, shell mill off and put a fresh. Uh, end mill on there to get as clean a cut as I can. But right now we just need to remove metal, so let's get after it. Okay, we're down to the last 50,000. I'm trying to make this side as flat as I can. I pulled it off and checked it onto the uh, on a uh, granite my granite surface plate, and uh, I went ahead and referenced it and was able to get an 8,000 feeler gauge under the opposite side that we were milling before. So right now, what we're doing is we're just taking 20 thou off the top. We're trying to make this as flat as we can. When I'm done with this cut. I will remove it, take it over to the granite plate again, check it for feeler gauges to see how flat it is, and then if we have it nice and flat, which I believe we will, then I will turn it over and then take the final cut on the other side. So here we go. I got it on kind of a slow feed right now. I'm kind of experimenting. This is a inch and a half end mill. I'm running at about 350 RPMs. I think it's a little bit slow, but I'm just trying to be conservative to get the best finish I possibly can. Okay, we're over at the uh, Bridgeport here. Uh, some of you may have seen my shop tour from several years back where I had this uh, uh, in need of some serious work. I ended up finding a uh, 2J uh, variable speed head uh, that was completely rebuilt from uh, one of the OWWM guys and uh, purchased it and uh, put it on here at the last Iron Fest. So uh, uh, what we're doing right now is we've got the bar complete and we are now drilling the holes to mount it back over on the uh, utility hacksaw. So uh, these three holes are the mounting holes. I've already got two of them done. What we have to do is drill a half inch hole. Uh, uh, I've already spotted the three holes with a center punch using this as a guide. Uh, I've got two of the holes uh, uh, already drilled and counterboard. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, show you guys uh, 
uh, using the uh, bridge port drilling the last uh, hole and then counter boring it to three quarters inch so the uh, cap head screw uh, will fit uh, below nice and flush. So let me move you in closer and uh, we'll get you going. All right, we've already used the center drill to locate the hole and uh, drill a small pilot, so we're located. Now we're going to go ahead and start drilling. Got a half inch drill bit, I'm at 800 RPMs. A little oil. Not too much. Stringy chips. Check that out. Let's get this razor wire out of here. And about another eighth of an inch. Some more oil in there. Okay, now that we got the three mounting holes uh, drilled and countersunk, I want to uh, reinstall in the new bar the oil ways for the oil to get from the top to the bottom. Uh, the top of the machine has two uh, oil ports for lubrication of this bar because it's the, what moves back and forth and reciprocates. So I want to make sure I re-drill these so the oil can get down to the bottom. So I'm just using a transfer punt, so I'll bring you guys in. I could just as easily mark it off and use a centering gauge and all that, you know, a center finder and whatnot, but this is just as easy. Just a hardened center punch. And it's not even critical placement, just so the oil gets to the bottom. Two dimples, away we go. All right, back over to the bridge port to drill these two through holes. They are 364s. No, I'm sorry. These are 13 64ths of an inch. Now we'll countersink just a little bit, take off that burr and we're done.